Welcome back to the Deep Dive. Today, uh, we're jumping into a discovery that's really shaking things up in physics. For almost, what, 170 years, there's been this fundamental rule of Wiedemann France law. It's been like the bedrock for understanding how metals handle electricity and heat. A real cornerstone. Now, picture that cornerstone getting, well, seriously challenged. Not by something pretty wild. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start with the rule itself before we get into the rule breaking. The Wiedemann France law been the go-to principle for understanding how electricity and heat move through metals since like 1853. A long time. Basically, the core idea is that electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity in metals, they scale together. They're proportional. So if a material lets electricity flow easily, it should also let heat flow easily. And the other way around. Right. And this link comes from the idea that it's mostly the electrons doing the heavy lifting for both carrying charge and carrying heat in typical metals. And look, this wasn't just some, you know, minor observation. It's been absolutely critical for modeling, for predicting how electrons behave and everything. Wires, chips, you name it. Yeah, what's really fascinating here, I think, is just how deeply embedded this assumption became. It's almost um, intuitive, isn't it? You picture these little electron particles zipping through a metal lattice. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense they'd carry both charge and heat pretty efficiently. Yeah. It's guided so much of material science. But uh, graphene is now showing us something fundamentally different. It's forcing yeah. a bit of a rethink on that basic picture. Okay, so with that foundation laid, things get really interesting with this IS discovery. It's detailed in a study, I think it's coming out in 2025 in Nature Physics. Uh -huh. And the key, apparently, was getting this ultra-clean graphene. That's not just a footnote, yeah. right? Because impurities usually scatter electrons all over the place. Mm -hmm. It makes it hard to see how they naturally want to behave together. Exactly. You need that pristine environment. Right. So in this clean graphene, at that special energy level, the Dirac point, the electrons stopped acting like you know, a chaotic gas of individuals. Instead, they formed what the researchers are calling a a near-perfect quantum fluid. To try and picture that, uh. maybe think less about individual pinballs bouncing around and more like um, honey slowing or a yeah. smooth river. Yeah, very, very low friction fluid. Right, a cohesive stream. These electrons are moving collectively, interacting strongly with each other, not just bouncing off defects or vibrations in the material. And that collective movement, that's a whole different way for charge and heat to get around. And connecting that to the bigger picture, like you said, it's not just a tiny tweak to the old models. It's a pretty profound challenge. Our standard picture, often called a Fermi gas model, treats electrons and metals as basically independent particles, maybe bumping off things, but fundamentally acting alone. This study shows, though, that in graphene, under these specific conditions, you get what's more like a Fermi liquid. The electrons exhibit this collective, almost hydrodynamic flow. And the significance is huge because this fluid-like behavior completely changes the relationship between electrical and thermal conductivity. That's why the wiedemann franz law, which is built on that independent particle idea, just breaks down. It doesn't apply here. So digging into how it violates the law, it really comes down to how energy spreads or dissipates. The old law assumes electrons carry both charge and heat, and whatever slows them down, like scattering off impurities, affects both kinds of transport in the same proportion. Okay, that makes sense for the old model. But when electrons act like a fluid, they're mainly interacting with each other very strongly. This means they can be incredibly efficient at moving charge, almost like a superconductor, but through a different mechanism. But their ability to move heat might be limited differently. The two just don't scale together anymore. So they become decoupled. Exactly. Decoupled. And the researchers made this, frankly, astounding comparison. They likened this electron fluid to quark gluon plasma. Wow. Okay, that's a, that's a heavy comparison. It really is. Quark gluon plasma, that's the stuff that existed like microseconds after the Big Bang. Yes. So hot, so energetic that the basic building blocks of matter, quarks and gluons, acted like a near-perfect, incredibly low viscosity fluid. The fact that electrons in humble graphene are showing similar low viscosity fluid behavior, well, it tells you we're looking at an incredibly exotic, super efficient form of collective electron movement. And it's this specific kind of movement that breaks the link between charge and heat transport predicted by Wiedemann Franz. That analogy really hits home comparing it to the birth of the universe. So, okay, this leads to the obvious question. Why graphene? What's so special about this one atom thick sheet of carbon? What gives it these uh, superpowers to defy such a long-standing physical law? That's a great question. And yeah, it gets into the really unique quantum mechanics of graphene. 
This latest breakthrough didn't come out of nowhere, right? It builds on earlier work. You mentioned Paul Thibodeau's 2018 paper. Right, in physical review letters. Yeah, his work and others too started pointing towards graphene's electrons behaving in ways that involve, well, relativistic effects. Yeah. Even though they aren't moving at the speed of light, their behavior is described by equations similar to those used for relativistic particles. Relativistic effects in a material on a lab bench. Kind of, yeah. In graphene, even at room temperature, the electrons act like massless Dirac fermions. Now, Dirac fermions are particles described by the Dirac equation, which is usually tied to high energy physics and relativity. In graphene, these electrons effectively behave as if they have zero rest mass. Zero mass. Effectively zero rest mass within the material. This lets them zip around at speeds that are actually a significant fraction of the speed of light within the graphene sheet. That's really unusual compared to electrons and normal metals. And this massless Dirac fermion character, that's absolutely key. It allows for really strong coherent interactions between the electrons. That's crucial for forming this fluid state. Right. Then you combine that with graphene's other weird property, it's a zero band gap semi-metal. Meaning? Meaning there's no energy gap electrons have to jump over to start conducting. They have this continuous range of available energy states right near that Dirac point. So you take these relativistic massless electrons, put them in this zero gap material, and you make it ultra clean like the ISC team did. And suddenly the conditions are perfect for the electrons to interact so strongly and so often with each other that they just stop acting like individuals. They flow collectively as this low viscosity fluid. And in that state, yeah, the old Wiedemann and Franz assumptions just don't hold up. Okay, so it's not just about breaking an old physics law, which is cool in itself. It sounds like this opens up some really massive possibilities. The source material we looked at mentioned some things that sound almost like science fiction. Right. Like this idea of a tabletop analog to extreme cosmic conditions. What does that even mean? Studying the universe in a lab. Pretty much. That's one of the most profound implications. Think about phenomena like that quark gluon plasma we mentioned. From the Big Bang. Exactly. Or maybe even aspects of black hole physics. These things happen under conditions of incredible energy, density, gravity, stuff we absolutely cannot recreate directly on Earth in a controlled way. Right, you need giant colliders or telescopes looking light years away. But if the collective behavior of electrons in graphene mimics the mathematical description of those extreme systems, then suddenly you have a much more accessible way to test theories, to probe physics that was previously out of reach. It's like a simulator built from carbon atoms. And didn't you say there was CERN research from 2000 that kind of supports this connection? Yes. The quark gluon plasma research at CERN definitely identified similar fluid-like properties in those extreme early universe conditions, which adds weight to this analogy. It suggests these fluid dynamics might be more universal than we thought. Wow. Okay, so studying the cosmos on a chip. What else? Quantum technology you mentioned. Yeah, this could potentially revolutionize quantum tech. And perhaps the most uh, headline-grabbing idea is mimicking black hole thermodynamics. Okay, now you're really blowing my mind. How? Well, the specific mathematical framework describing these interacting electrons might share features with the equations describing, say, particle behavior near a black hole's event horizon. Again, it's an analogy, but it could let us probe quantum gravity concepts without needing an actual black hole or a planet-sized collider. It's a huge potential leap for fundamental physics. That's incredible. What about more down-to-earth applications? Well, down-to-earth is relative here, but yes. Yeah. The research points towards developing incredibly sensitive quantum sensors. Because this electron fluid is so coherent, it might be exquisitely sensitive to external influences, like magnetic fields. How sensitive? Potentially sensitive enough to detect magnetic fields as weak as those produced by human brain waves. Seriously? Detecting thoughts, almost? Well, detecting the magnetic signals associated with neural activity. Think about what that could mean for medical diagnostics, for brain-computer interfaces, maybe even for non-invasively studying how the brain works in real time with unprecedented detail, or for material science detecting tiny magnetic defects. Absolutely. Creating these condensed matter systems, systems here on Earth that mirror cosmic extremes. That's a powerful new playground for physicists, both theoretical and experimental. We can test ideas that were just stuck on blackboards before. Right. And the sensor applications, I mean, detecting brainwave level fields, that could genuinely transform neuroscience, maybe even psychiatry or diagnostics. But, you know, we should probably add a note of caution, too. 
Ah, the reality check. Yeah, just a bit. Translating these amazing lab results into actual, reliable, scalable technology, that's always a big jump. That ultra-clean requirement for the graphene. Okay, you mentioned that. Maintaining that level of purity outside a specialized lab in mass-produced devices, that's going to be a major engineering challenge. It's exciting, but there's still a path to walk. That's a really important point. The journey from discovery to device is often long and tricky. But okay, let's try and wrap this up. To recap our deep dive today, the big aha moment is this. We've got ultra clean graphene. Its electrons at this special direct point aren't acting like normal electrons in a metal. They're forming a near perfect quantum fluid. And crucially, this fluid behavior completely breaks a 170-year-old rule, the Wiedemann-Franz law, which links electrical and thermal conductivity. Exactly. And that's huge. It's not just some obscure finding for specialists. It fundamentally shifts how we need to think about electrons moving in materials. It tells us they can act collectively, like a fluid with incredibly low viscosity, not just as independent particles. This forces us to reconsider our basic models of conduction. It really underscores that maybe the rules we thought were universal have exceptions, especially in these exotic quantum materials. And the potential impact stretches from, well, they're ridiculously large, to the incredibly small and practical. This quantum fluid in graphene acts like a mini lab for studying extreme cosmic conditions, mm -hmm. quark gluon plasma, maybe even black hole physics, without needing a super collider. A tabletop universe, in a way. Right. But it also points towards tangible tech breakthroughs, like quantum sensors so sensitive they could potentially pick up the magnetic whispers of your own brain activity. So maybe the thought to leave you with is this. How many other basic laws of physics, rules we've taken for granted for decades, even centuries, might also have loopholes? Loopholes waiting to be found in the weird quantum behavior of materials we're only just starting to really understand and control. Could something seemingly simple, maybe even simpler than graphene, hold the keys to unlocking even bigger secrets about how the universe works? It's uh, definitely an exciting time to be watching this space. The search is definitely on.